Hi, welcome to another episode from Fyspire. My name is Pia. Today we're actually going to be looking at getting help and finding program documentation right in the terminal. Now you may be asking why bother that I can just do a quick Google search and find the answer that I need, which is a valid point, but I still believe that there's a lot of value in going through the program's documentation, and I'll try to prove that in this video. So let's begin. The first thing we usually do to get help for a particular command is to use the dash H or dash dash help flag. This prints out a help message that contains the basics, mainly the syntax of the command and a listing of all the options. In this instance, I'm trying to locate a hello world text file that I misplaced somewhere, but locates, it's not finding anything, but I know it's there because I was just working on it. So we can just bring up locates help option as you can see, there's an ignore case option, a dash i, or dash dash ignore case. We can rerun the command, and there you go. It finds it, and I'm an idiot because the text file was just in my home directory. Help flag is quick and should be your first step on why something is failing. Like, we try to create a couple new directories. But I'm getting this error message, cannot create directory, books, slash authors, no such file directory. It's kind of a word message, so let's print out the help screen for make directory. And as you can see that there's a parent option that will create parent directories as needed as long as there's no error message. We'll rerun the command again with the dash P. And there you have it, everything's created. As I can see, yep, it's all there. Um, let's try another. Say I want to copy a directory, but do not want to overwrite any existing files. I obviously know I need to use the copy command, the CP command, but don't remember the exact flag to achieve this task. Seeing how CP is a destructive command, I probably, with no undo, I probably want to read the documents before attempting anything. So let's just use the help flag. Ooh, and well, help text is too large to fit into one single screen. Well, with GNOME I can just use mouse, scroll up, it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> and just look at the text and read it that way, but sometimes you're using a terminal without mouse support. And let's face it, you're using the terminal for a reason, meaning you don't even want to use the mouse in the first place. You want to do everything by the keyboard. And I'll show you that way right now. All we need to do is what we call pipe the help text into a program called less. You do this by using uh, the vertical bar character over your enter key on most keyboards. Basically what this does is connects the output of CP help into less. And less is uh, basically a terminal text reader. So let's run that. Now here we are in less reading the output of CP help. Now it's fairly intuitive to navigate the screen, I think so anyways. It's down key to move one line down, up key to move one line up. Control F to jump a page and Control B to jump back. So let's just go through the options quickly. Uh, a dash A for archive, D force, I don't want that. I for interactive prompt before overwriting. Yeah, well that that could work because uh, I don't want to overwrite so I can just hit no but let's put it over waste because I have a hundred files in this directory that I'm going to copy over so I don't want to be through the terminal hitting you no know, constantly. Um, so I see it overrides the previous N option so let's just look at the N. Dash N for no clobber. Do not overwrite an existing file. Um, yeah, that's looks like what we need. Um, let's just go through the other options quickly. So we'll control F to forward a page. Um, symbolic make, no, 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 uh, verbose. Well, looks like there's an update option actually. Dash U. Copy only when the source file is newer than the destination file or when the destination file is missing. Um, that could work too, but I just want no clobber, but that's an option that's useful and for the future. And uh, so that's why your first step shouldn't always be to Google an answer because you can learn a lot just by quickly going through the documents. 
So we got what we need, the dash n, so we can quit the last terminal just by hitting Q. Now we're back to the familiar screen of the terminal window with the command prompt and we can just run the command with the dash n flag. Okay, well that was a good example of using a command's help text, but a lot of situations where we don't even know what we're doing or we're doing it for the first time, we don't even know which command to use. So we need to do something else, and that's something else it, that can help is the apropos command. Apropos searches uh, documentation for us and prints out a list of possible commands that may work. We can try it for copying files, we'll just pretend that we have no idea what we're doing. So let's type in apropos copy files. And well, that's a large number of returns. So let's see, let's try to pipe it with less, see if we can go through the list. And these commands, they, some look appropriate, but some still look strange. Let's look up uh, the help text for our proposal, see if we can return better results. So we'll just type in the help flag and we'll look at the available options. I see exact, but I also see and. And pro should probably work. So let's use the A flag for and and see if that returns a better search results. And there it is, the CQ, CP command that we can use. I should point out what these numbers mean in the brackets. They're quite important as they relate back to the manual sections. In total, there are eight sections. The two sections you have to worry about now are one and eight. One are general commands, and eight are system administration related commands. This distinction is important because you can use the uh, dash s flag to limit which sections we're searching. Let's say we're interested in managing the IP addresses of the machine and don't know where to look. So we can start, we know that IP address management is probably a system administrative task. So we can type in apropos dash s and the eight to limit our search for in that section. And then we'll include the and keyword IP address. And we get something IP address 8 for protocol address management in return, so that looks promising. Now if I type in IP dash address, it says command not found. That's because these results do not correspond with actual command names, but they're manual pages. We need to look up the particular man entry page and read the documentation. We do that by using the man command and to look up the IP address. Um, documentation is just man 8 IP address. Okay, now we're in the IP address manual pages. If this looks familiar to you, then it should be because it's the less program. So all the navigation is the same. Directional keys to move up and down. Control F and Control B to page forward and backwards. Let's say I wanted to find the current IP addresses of the machine. I see here there's a show option. Um, as an aside, I should probably explain what the command syntax means in the synopsis window. Everything in this bold white color is a keyword. Um, the square brackets are optional. And curly braces mean that at least one option must be chosen with the pipe symbol representing exclusive options. So here it is, I can type in IP address show or IP address flush, but not IP address show flush. With the rest of the command being optional, I'm just going to run the IP address show, show command by itself and see what it gives me. So to exit the man page, it's Q. And let's try to run the command. Well, here it looks like I have two network interfaces on the machine, a loopback and an Ethernet card. A loopback obviously is set to 127.0.0.1. And the Ethernet card is set to a private IP address. Okay, now that I know where to look for help with administrating IP addresses and what command to use, 
I'm gonna try to do something crazy and we'll just add another loopback address for the hell of it. Let's try to make 126.0.0.1 return our pings. So we can just go back to the man pages and try to figure that out. Back to the man pages, I see an add keyword with the general syntax. I want two things, the interface address and the interface name. Well, that sounds easy enough, so let's just quit it and try. Type in IP address add 126.0.0.1, give it a net mass 8, and then the keyword dev, and then the interface name for the loopback, which is LO, and we'll see if that works. We get no error message, so I'm assuming it worked fine, So, but we can type in IP address show, see if it's there, and it looks like it's there. I guess for the final test, we'll just try to ping the address. All right, cool, it seems like it works. Well, I'm gonna finish it here um, with the machine pinging itself. Really what I want you to take away from this video was that it's actually quite easy to get help with Linux through the command line without instantly opening a new tab to Google. You, if you forget an option, you can use the dash dash help flag, or you take a few seconds to go through the commands man pages. If you don't know which command to use, well, you can try the apropos keyword search. There are thousands of man hours in those man pages. You know, people put a lot of time into them, and people have been using these tools since the 70s, since Unix, before the invention of the internet. These resources are a great way to learn, and uh, really, that's what it's all about. Let me know what you think about the video by posting comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter.